so to, uh, we will be discussing the third problem of today's weekly contest count number of rectangles containing each point so this is an interesting problem uh, which have several possible solutions we will be discussing one possible solution in this uh, in this video and then in subsequent video i will be presenting to you another dimension of this problem wherein we will reduce the space complexity of this uh, problem using the same concept we used to solve the fourth uh, question of today's weekly contest so let's start so the problem states that we are given a number of rectangles each rectangle will start at 0 comma 0 and end at given points so uh, 3 2 comma 5 denotes a rectangle which starts at 0 comma 0 and end at 2 comma 5 now we are given a number of queries in each query we will have we will be given one point so here 2 comma 1 denotes one point and we need to answer how many rectangles are there which has 2 comma 1 in it similarly how many rectangles are there which has 1 comma 4 in it so for example uh, 2 comma 1 is present in two rectangles one is this blue another one is this violet rectangle 2 comma like for 1 comma 4 this one this point present is only one rectangle because uh, you can see this violet rectangle is the only rectangle that contains this 1 comma 4 point others doesn't have this point so now let's try to solve it so uh, how to solve it first uh, the first very first approach could be like to iterate over every rectangle and just see whether the point is there in that rectangle or not so for each query we will iterate over every uh, rectangles okay so this will be the time complexity but you can see this will not pass because number of queries that we have uh, is 10 to the power 4 and number of rectangles that we have is also 10 to the power 4 520 power 4 so this will not pass now uh, like what is the second approach second approach could be like let's try to make an observation like what is it mean to for this point to be present in a rectangle if it is present in some rectangle then for that particular rectangle the value of x will be greater than 4 and the value of y will be greater than 6 so that's the only rectangle for in which this point will be present so you can see for this rectangle the value of x is greater but y value of y is not greater so that's why it is not present in the rectangle so if you can see this you will think of some kind of sorting right so now let's try to solve like what we have now is we are given some points uh, and we have to find like we have for we are, we are given some queries for each query we need to answer how many points are there which have uh, both x and y coordinates or both the value greater than the given point so let's uh, see this so let's say we are given this point so we are given this uh, uh, 2 4 uh, 2 comma 10 7 comma 9 8 comma 4 okay and now let's say we are we have to answer this 4 comma 6 so for 4 comma 6 let's say we try to sort it by x okay so if we sort it by x we will get this 2 7 and 8 but to s then do a binary search on 4 what we will do is like we, we, we can just come here like 4 okay so 4 comes like 4 comes somewhere here like so 4 will come somewhere here so we will uh, we can say either we can say these two are the points like greater than 4 but this the answer will not be 2 because in each of these points there can be points which have lesser y's we have sorted by x only right we haven't sorted by y within each x we can sort by y but there can be points within each x which are smaller than this 6 right so for example we have 8 comma 4 and 8 comma 4 we can see has point which have which which have y coordinate less than 6 so in this case what we eventually have to do is uh, for each x coordinate let's say for 2 we maintain a list of y coordinates 10 uh, for each x coordinate we maintain a list of y coordinates so in the current case only 9 for each x coordinates we can maintain a list of y coordinates in current case only 4 now we do a binary search on 4 so 4 comes here okay so now after 4 whatever numbers will be there for each of them we will just do a binary search for 6 on this list right because we can sort this list as well uh, by y and we can do binary search for 6 on this list so in this case uh, 6 will come here so number of elements after this is 1 so from this list 
there we will get one from this list we will get zero because uh, six will come somewhere here and number of uh, elements after six is zero so the answer would be one so hope you get the uh, point so what we are doing is we are maintaining a list for each x coordinate and then within each x coordinate we are just filtering out y coordinates by doing a binary search so what will be the time complexity of this approach let's say the to the maximum well like we have to maintain we have to iterate over all these x coordinates right so uh, number of possible x coordinates can be let's say l okay so that's the number of possible x coordinates uh, and for each x coordinates we are doing a binary search on y coordinate so that can take order log n time log or maybe log r time number of rectangles okay and this is the complexity for one query and we have total q queries so this q into l into log r now the value of l in our case is 10 to the power 9 okay so this will not pass but if we can replace it with h it can pass because h is only 100 so that's where uh, we can replace this with h and then can try again so replacing this with h eventually means instead of sorting this entire thing by x and maintaining a list for each y let's sort this by y and maintain a list for each x okay so that's what we will be doing so we will like let's say this is the uh, rectangle uh, now for each rectangle we will just maintain a list for all the x's uh, for in each y so for two we will maintain a list uh, of all the twos in our case only one so for two there will be a list which contain only ones uh, for three there will be a list which contain only two and for five there will be a list which contain only uh, two okay so that will be the list new list and for each of this list we have to then iterate over like for we will I just iterate over all of this and for each of this list we will do a binary search uh, for the given x coordinate okay so the complexity would be uh, then h into log r into uh, number of uh, queries uh, which will be q okay so even this will not pass because uh, this will be like at the border it may or may not pass but we can uh, we have to remove this h from this equation if we have to decrease the time complexity because log r we anyway can't, can't remove because we have to do binary search on x and q is the number of queries that also we can't remove so we have to remove this h now how will you, will you remove this h so basically this h is coming from the place where we are iterating over every uh, value of y right like we are iterating over every value of 5 which is greater than the given y so for 1 we are iterating over 2 3 and 5 so that's where this h is coming from so now if we like if we do something that will not force us to iterate over every possibilities then we can remove this h from the equation right so that's where we are saying that whenever we will add something to 3 we will also add that to 2 and also add that to 1 so by this what we have done is we have maintained a list of a particular y which contains all the value of x up till this so it contains all the value for 3 4 5 6 and up till 10 to the power 9 okay so what we have done is something like this so for one uh, like we have one here okay so for one, uh, uh, sorry we, we have this two here so this uh, because of this two one will be inserted in one and two so in y1 one is inserted in y2 one is inserted okay now second is y equals to three so in y equals to one y equals to two y equals to three we will insert two so we will insert two in all this three values now y is 5 we will insert 2 in 1 2 3 4 5 so 1 2 3 4 and 5 so that's what the list we have now because we have this list we don't have to iterate over every possible y 
we can just iterate over one of uh, one of the y. Let's say we have to find for one. We can just iterate over the y1 because y1 contains all the values of y1, y2, y3, y4, y5. Okay, so that's where that's how we remove h. But we have to calculate this list now, right? So how will you calculate this list? So for each rectangle, you have to uh, go over all the uh, h values. So basically for let's say three, we have to go to one, two, three. For five, we have to go to one, three, one, two, three, four, five. So that's where for each rectangle, you have to go through all the values and, up and build this list. So final time complexity is r into h plus uh, q into log r. Okay, so that's the final time complexity of our solution. So what we have done basically is uh, something like this. So we have just for each rectangle, we maintain a list of for all the y's. We maintain a list of all the y's and for each rectangle x comma y, we iterate from one to y and append x to the list y. Okay, and then for each y, uh, we will sort this list because we have to do binary search if you remember. So this, we have to sort this list. And then for each query, we will only look at the list y and do a binary search for x. And that's all that uh, we are done here. So the code for this would be very simple. So that's where I'm not discussing the code, but what would be the space and time complexity? So space compl like time complexity, as we have discussed to build this, we will be requiring for each rectangle. We are iterating over all the y's. So number of y's h. So that's the first part. For this, the sorting part, like let's just ignore the sorting part for now. Uh, and for each query, we are doing a binary search. So for each query, we are doing a binary search uh, that can take order log r time. So in, in each list, there can be all the elements, like basically all the rectangles. So that's what the time complexity is. Now what's the space complexity? Space complexity is r into h. Why? Uh, because we are iterating, like we are just appending x to each list of y. So that's where the space complexity is r into h. But uh, like the, that's the that's the solution. You can submit. You can uh, uh, try. Like I will just link a sample solution below. You can look at that. Uh, or if you want to code it yourself, I will encourage you to code it and submit it uh, in lead code. But I would like you to solve. Uh, the problem in which the space complexity is not r into h, like it is not uh, a quadratic space. Like try to solve, bring down this space complexity uh, to a linear, like either r or h or any of these variables. So we don't want space complexity to be r into h. Let's say that's the follow-up. So how will you approach that particular problem? So try to think of it. I will discuss it in the next video. And if you have any solution, please feel free to link them in the comment below. Uh, I will definitely help you answer whether your solution is correct or not. So that's it for today's video. If you like the content, please give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to the channel. I am uploading regular videos uh, where I am discussing these sort of follow-ups uh, interesting follow-ups in every video. So do consider subscribing and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.